for the Asian markets, it's largely mixed. We have the Hang Seng, which is up around 80 points. Uh, Taiwanese index absolutely flat. The MHI has issued a notice for recovery of 124 crores in subsidy. On the way up, the near-term upside level is about 100 points out. That is 18, 730 is the near-term upside level. We are witnessing uh, low demand in the market compared to what the business was planned to. I think it's going to be the next 24 months before we start seeing significant volume of uh, uh, green hydrogen or... Here we have it, the first tick on the Nifty, very quiet, absolutely flat. I think investors would have to remain focused on those sectors which are seeing some kind of an upward earnings estimate trajectory. I think in the Q1, I am expecting industry growth to be close to 10% overall. The facility in Montreal, Canada has now been classified as official action indicated or OAIs. Uh, things have been very, very quiet since morning and it slipped now in the last one hour. MTM gains have come on gold. Currency and gold have been revalued up. For the markets, they continue to remain very choppy. We have 16 points of an uptick on the Nifty. Well, that was a day so far. You're with us here on the last hour of trade, closing bell. We're coming to you live from the CNBC TV 18, Motila Oswal Studios. I'm Prashant. With me, my colleagues, Reema and Nigel are joining in the studios as well. Guys, hi, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. afternoon. I think we can use a lot of adjectives to describe the market. Most of it is in the uh, sort of, you know, uh, tepid and range-bound. Boring. And not very much. Boring. <laughs> Never use that word, Nigel. <laughs> use everything. Never that. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, you've got the market uh, doing uh, nothing. I mean, 25-point change of the index and uh, things are... Uh, where, I mean, 16, uh, 18,600, 620, I mean, uh, round about there. And it's not looked at any point since the morning that it wants to do uh, anything large, up or down at all. Uh, so, uh, so, I mean, the moves are in single stocks, and there are so many stocks, both up and down. Uh, by the way, the market breadth is closed. It was almost one is to one now. It was, this was, you know, much better in the first couple of hours of trade. Now, uh, on the Nifty, just two levels on the upside, 18,730 uh, 18, is basically uh, is where the Nifty will meet the upper end of the channel. It's a rising steep channel, and that is 18,730. And supports come in at about 18,420. Uh, it doesn't look like we, we'll kind of go towards either of those two ranges. And the U.S. markets were shut yesterday. Uh, Friday was a big day. NASDAQ was up 2%, and I think we'll just see if you have any follow-through uh, moves left in the U.S. markets. Futures for the last two days have been trading absolutely flat. Reema. Well, it's still very quiet in the U.S. futures. The Dow is up 70 points. European markets not doing too much. The French index CAC is down about 0.4%. Uh, the DAX is up a bit. The FTSE is down a little bit, down 0.1%. So not too much action taking place in Europe, at least in early trade. For our own markets, we've got the Fin Nifty expiry and the two Nifty companies, Apollo uh, Adani Ports and Apollo Hospitals, are yet to report their numbers, so the street will be eyeing them. But um, you know, even as the index is not doing too much, you've got a lot of individual movers. So Force Motors, we've been talking about it since morning. Munjal Shoba just reported numbers, big jump in the profitability. The stock has surged. Nucleus Software. 10%, 20% up on Friday, 20% up on Monday, and it's followed it up with another 10% up move on nuclear software. Even Interglobe Aviation is flying pretty high. And so many financial stocks like Ujjivan Small Finance Bank, IDFC First Bank, Equitas, SFB, l and Finance Holding, all these stocks are trading at fresh highs right now. Well, uh, Rima, you know, the last uh, 55 minutes may not be so boring. That's the hope, at least, because the Nifty Financial Services Index, that will play out expiry. And you pull up the intraday chart, in the last 30 minutes, the Nifty Financial Services Index has moved virtually to the day's high. So will there be some fireworks? Remember, these are the financials. You have the Bajaj Twins in there. HDFC Limited as well is the big weight in there, which is not part of the Nifty Bank, but it's part of the Nifty Financial Services Index. Now, I'm looking at the options data, and the positioning is such that on uh, the Nifty Financial Services Index, 19,620, 19,625, that's the crucial level that the bears are looking to defend. And that's because 19,600 call has the highest amount of open interest. It's the most active event today. And the premium at the start of today was around 21 rupees. So that's why 19,620, you need to keep an eye out on that mark. For the time being, the Nifty Financial Services Index has made a bit of an up move. Can it move up? Well, it appears that at least this Tuesday could be far more entertaining or far more exciting than the previous couple of Tuesdays because the Nifty Financial Services Index 
didn't move much, but today it's giving that sense that maybe it's about to make a bit of a move. Bangla, what else? Well, Nigel, you know, doing nothing is not particularly a bad thing because when you're doing nothing, you're sitting and absorbing all the other, uh, you know, cues that are coming by. And that's perhaps what our market's doing just beneath the all-time high for our indices as well. 18,636, that's where we are. Um, the options were positioned themselves for, you know, around uh, consolidation around that 18,600 mark itself. The bulls writing the 18,600 put, the bears writing the 18,650 and 18,700 calls as well. So this is a range where everyone is looking at expiry, at least in this week itself. But a bunch of stocks doing extremely well right now. We're seeing a big move uh, on Infosys that has moved to the high point of trade. That's as far as the front line is are concerned. But even in the broader markets, we have PFC and REC, which have moved higher. Aditya Birla Capital, which has moved higher. And also, at the same time, we've seen HDFC Life move higher as well. So maybe at an index level, it looks like not a lot has happened. But individual stocks, there is a lot beneath the surface. Okay, that's uh, indeed what's happening. Let's tell our viewers then what we've lined up on the show. Ujjivan Small Finance Bank and RBL Bank are surging in trade. What's aiding the up move? Details coming up on the show. From the pharma space, auto pharma is higher in trade post a good quarter. What are brokerages saying? Details coming up on the show. Campus Activewear, Repco Home Finance also reacting to their quarterly numbers. Key highlights from the earnings coming up in closing bell. We'll also be joined by Vinay Jai Singh of JM Financial Services. He'll be taking us through his view on the markets as well as individual stocks and sectors that he's bullish and bearish on. All this and much more in the next 60 minutes. All right. Uh, well, uh, that's the lineup here. How should you position yourself in this last hour of trade? Mitesh is with us with that uh, sort of perspective. Mitesh, hi. Uh, by the way, as we uh, you know enter the last 60 minutes, there is one push higher, 45 points now, 18. 642 on the index. Is there a trade, uh, Bitesh, on the index and uh, uh, specific stocks? What are you watching? Um, afternoon, Prashant. So I think, you know, we already have a trade uh, long on the Bank Nifty and the Nifty. And uh, suggested trading stop loss is to about 44 to 100 on the Bank Nifty and 18,510 on the Nifty. Both have held on. So I think that's the stop loss. So if you don't want to buy right now, because in the last one, one and a half hours, two hours, we have had some kind of a marginal loan. Decline should be used to buy with these stops. And I think uh, the bank nifty, you know, once it starts getting past 44, uh, 440, 450, which was the hourly close uh, on Monday, uh, I think there's a good chance that uh, we might see the bank nifty head towards 45,000. So in that sense, staying positive. On the stock side, I have a buy on NMDC. That's a buy with a stop at about uh, 105 for targets of 112. And uh, REC is a buy disclaimer. We have some call option positions over here. REC is a buy with a stop below 136 for targets of 146. Right. Uh, we speak about the Fin Nifty expiry and we have Bajaj Finance, which has now moved to the high point of trade. So uh, those are a couple of uh, stocks that we'll keep an eye out on. But a couple of other financial stocks also on our radar, Ujivan Finance and Ujivan Small Finance Bank, that is, and RBL Bank, among the top gainers in trade today. Abhishek joins in to tell us what exactly is aiding the move in these stocks. Abhishek. Uh, well, Manglam, uh, RBI nominee exits Ujjivan board. So, RBI had appointed an additional director, that is Mr. P. N. Raghunathan, who has now stepped down from the uh, board as on uh, 29th May 2023. So, P. N. Raghunathan stepped down is ahead of his term, which was to expire, uh, you know, uh, way ahead in November 2023. He was appointed as an additional director on 29th November 2021 for a period of two years. So, before his term could end, he has actually exited, uh, which is a good sign given the fact that RBI had appointed him uh, to look into the board of uh, Ujjivan Small Finance Bank. So, in this context, you know, will RBL Bank be the next one uh, to see the additional director which was appointed by RBI to uh, step down ahead of his term? That is a question that market is factoring in. So, RBI had appointed uh, Yogesh Dayal as an additional director on the board of RBL Bank on the day that Vishwavir Ahuja had stepped down from his role of MD and CEO. That is 25th uh, December 2021. So Yogesh Dayal was appointed for a period of two years and his term was to end or is to end, uh, sorry, uh, on 23rd December 2023. Back to you. All right. So that explains the kind of moves that we're seeing both in Ajeev and Small Finance and RPL Bank. Uh, we have Dipan Mehta, Director at Elixir Secure Equities, uh, joining in now. Dipan, uh, thank you for joining in. Good afternoon. In the financial space, is there something that you like? Uh, the two stocks that Abhishek mentioned, but also we're looking at uh, some moves coming by in something like a Bajaj Finance, Bajaj Finserve. HDFC Life has moved higher as well. Uh, it is a broad uh, swathe uh, brush that I'm giving you. Um, anything that you like here? 
Yeah, Mangalam, good afternoon and thank you for having me on your show. Yes, I think uh, there's a lot of choice when it comes to banks and BFCs, but our preferred pick with usual disclosure is, I think, within the bank space, we like IDFC First Bank. It has been hitting new highs lately. And amongst all the banks, it had, um, I would say, amongst the best results on qualitative and quantitative terms as well. And it's a new generation bank, high focus on technology, very high spreads. And over the years, the company has increased its uh, CASA ratio as well, which is very, very promising and provides a lot of comfort. Within the NBFC space, you want to be with the NBFCs, which have which had survived the ILFS crisis and which still managed to raise resources and control their NPAs. And two names come to mind. Chola Mandalam, again, if you look at the numbers which came for the March quarter, were exceptionally good. And second, of course, is Bajaj Finance, which I thought the numbers were pretty decent for the March quarter. And as they transition themselves to a full, full-fledged fintech company, I think more and more value will be added. So these are the two companies we are quite optimistic on. And a high-risk, high-return kind of a, a strategy could be the MFIs, the likes of a Credit Access Grameen or Spandana also. There I feel that there's scope for earnings to get, uh, to re to, for the earnings to move up and the P's to get re-rated as well. Mm. Uh, well, uh, you know, keep an eye out on the broader markets. A couple of these stocks which absolutely got bombed out, uh, HLE Glasscoat, you know, just pull up the intraday chart out there. Uh, you'll see that today the stock has moved to the high point of the day. The volumes as well are higher than normal. You know, the stock is up because there is a margin recovery on a sequential basis. I'm not sure whether there's a con call or something that's on. But if you take a look at it from the peak, the stock is actually half of what it was. You know, so it was at around 1,200 rupees odd adjusted. And today it's moving up. But otherwise, you know, it's been a rank underperformer. Pull up the last one-year chart. Actually, don't only pull up today's chart. It's moving higher today. But the last one-year chart will tell you the kind of pain these companies have seen. Margins from high teens come down to low teens. And in fact, uh, you know, from those elevated levels, it's seen a sharp correction. Well, uh, Deepan, I wanted to ask you about a couple of other names that have absolutely got beaten down. Inox Wind, as well as Suzlon. Mm, I think I know how you, you know, how you approach these companies, but they have been rank underperformers. Suddenly, you're hearing some pos positive news flow that's coming in there. We had the management of Inox Wind. They are talking about being debt free in the next 18 months. They're talking about big revenues as well. And both those two stocks have come back on the radar. But what's your view? Avoid or try to play it? Yeah, good afternoon, Nigel. I think these stocks have tried to capture investors' imagination several times in the past. And it's a compelling story, I think. Uh, you know, renewable energy is a focus area. Uh, ESG is a very hot topic when it comes to investing. And one could expect that the way wind energy capacities are coming up, these companies should have no dearth of orders. But Suzlon nearly, I think, went under and had to be rescued. And Inox Wind also has underperformed drastically. And I myself have personally lost money in both these companies. So I, my, my view is uh, negative for these companies. Uh, but, you know, you could have a trading rally at any point of time. And the order book position is fine. It's just that execution, managing the margin, managing the return ratios, the balance sheet. I think all these are really challenging uh, for these companies. And I don't know why, but even the Sterling and Wilson, the other company which was engaged in renewable energy and they were on the solar side, they also had a very tough time. And, uh, you know, that company also had to deal with a lot of uh, balance related <laughs> issues. So there's something in this equipment manufacturing companies uh, which supply to the renewable energy. And unless we don't have some stability in earnings, I wouldn't want to venture into that sector. Hmm. Okay, so uh, that's uh, the view coming in on the renewable energy space. Uh, Dipan, do stay on. Aurobindo Pharma is one of the big movers, reported a good set of Q4 numbers. Ikta joins in with a brokerage call. Ikta. Thanks for that. Well, I'll start with Dam Capital. Buy rating target price 809. According to them, management is positive on the improving growth and the relative price stability, which is beginning to emerge in the U.S. markets. Kotak ad rating target price 625. The company is guiding for improved traction. They believe uh, that they expect the company to deliver an EBITDA CAGR of 15% over FY23 to 26. Ilara accumulate target price 691. The management has a target of further margin improvement in 
FY24 and are optimistic about the US business according to Elara City buy target price 660 stock is up 35% in the last couple of months now trading slightly above its five year mean they believe for the valuations to sustain following factors are crucial for the company for example the benefits of improved generic pricing scenario to probably continue uh, for the company in the US markets Bofa buy target price 725 and uh, they believe it was an inline quarter EBITDA margins were tad lower but the commentary was positive so overall bullish calls coming in for Rubin though uh, Dipan, thank you very much. Uh, sorry, Ekta, thank you very much for that. Dipan, thoughts on Aurobindo Pharma or anything else in the pharmaceutical pack which catches your fancy? Yeah, I think uh, very good for Aurobindo shareholders. After many quarters, we have seen a decent set of numbers from Aurobindo. But uh, there'll be a high degree of volatility in Aurobindo's earnings uh, because the main market, the US and other export markets, sometimes there is intense competition and price cuts, and other times there are opportunities that the companies can explore and uh, certain products, uh, they can get a higher margin as well. So it's not like a straight secular growth story as it was earlier. From that point of view, uh, one cannot be a really long-term investor in Aurobindo Pharma. But yes, I think trading rallies can come from time to time. And there's certainly a case for re-rating the P multiple of Aurobindo Pharma, which I think is at extremely attractive levels compared to its peer group. But the top pick, I think, from a risk return profile and from a safety viewpoint, would be Sun Pharma. I thought the numbers were exceptionally good. And they are on their path of increasing their uh, contribution from specialty products. And the focus has again come back into the domestic market. And I think that uh, uh, over the years, uh, if they continue on this strategy, uh, the street will start to give, give them a higher PE multiple. And we may see more, uh, uh, I would say, visibility when it comes to earnings and less volatility. And that's always very positive. So within the pharma space, there are a few pockets of opportunity. But from a safety profile, we prefer Sun Pharma. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Deepan, uh, you know, uh, just as an aside, a broker I was talking to uh, was telling me that uh, the two best asset classes in the world are uh, U.S. large caps and Indian small caps. Uh, just, uh, <laughs> I mean, but it's true, right? Look at uh, how, they, how these, uh, some of these stocks uh, are uh, running up. Uh, and uh, maybe there is a turn, maybe expectations of a turn, whatever, but... Uh, it's just been an incredible uh, kind of a move. What are you doing at the margin, Deepan, uh, in, in this mid-cap, small-cap kind of uh, uh, market cap zone? Uh, anything new you've bought? Anything you've got your eyes on? No, Prashant, I think you you got the you hit the nail on the head. I don't track U.S. large cap, but by and large, those stocks have done well because technology has done well and this entire chat GPT and AI is proving to be a, a kind of a shot in the arm for... U.S. Uh, tech companies and certainly capture the imagination over there. And also it's true that we are, I think, entering into a new phase of this bull market. And in that context, small mid-cap stocks should do exceptionally well. Look at the sectors which have done well. I think if you see uh, right from auto, auto ancillary, banks, capital goods, all of these the sectors have done pretty well. And if you go down the line away from the OEMs and the large companies and you go into the small mid-sized companies within these sectors, I think there's a scope for great uh, performance. Who knows, you could find a few multi-baggers as well. We are searching for them just now. But by and large, I think the next few months, the focus has to be on small mid-cap companies. Let's just take capital goods. I think uh, smaller companies which come into our mind at this point of time is a company like Praj Industries, which is into biofuels. Exceptional set of numbers. JV with Indian Oil Corporation could cert certainly open up a new uh, avenue of growth for them. Another company which came with very good set of numbers and has been a steady performer is ISGEC, ISGEC Engineering. Another quality player which did well when the entire capital goods sector was under pressure. Within the uh, NBFC uh, space, bank space, we spoke about IDFC First Bank, but I think AU Small Finance Bank also is hitting new highs. And that's been an absolute outperformer when it comes to uh, stock price returns as well as uh, overall improvement in the financials. And amongst the NBFCs, uh, we do like, uh, as I said, the MFIs, uh, as well as uh, Chola Mandalam Finance. So like that, I think if you go group by group, industry by industry, and look at the companies which have done well last two, three quarters, I think uh, if you bet on those companies, the next few quarters could be very interesting and you could have a sizable return on the investments made over there. Okay. All right. Uh, Dipan, uh... Good to hear your view on that. By the way, we had some flashes on NMBC for the last couple of months. They've been not cutting prices and international prices have been lower. 
So on expected lines, well, they've gone ahead and they have to bite the bullet. Now we're getting into monsoon season as well. They've cut prices by around 400 to around 500 rupees, or depending on the grade that you're looking at. This was expected, actually. We had asked the management as well, post the con call. So that's why the stock is not reacting. Well, time to slip into a short break. On the other side, we'll be joined by Vinay Jai Singh of JM Financial. He'll discuss some stocks and themes that he likes. My journey of insurance and investments began at the same time when I invested in LIC SEEP. In this fast-moving world, SEEP can balance your funds with security and growth. SEEP will take care of the ups and downs of the market and will give you fruitful results so that you enjoy the ride. And when SEEP is with you, you can soar high. LIC's unit-linked insurance plan SEEP offers savings and protection so that you can soar high in your life. LIC, har pal aapke saath. We don't just design new cars. We create new ways to design all cars. In fact, we make the whole world of India's mobility new forever. Duniya mein kuch log kehte hain aur kuch log karte hain. Jab kaha gaya desh mein solar power safal nahi ho sakta, to humne suna nahi. उसे सफल कर दिखाया कहा देश का सबसे बड़ा पावर प्लांट बनाना इम्पॉसिबल तो हमने पॉसिबल कर दिया बोला कोने कोने तक बिजली पहुंचाना किसी के बस की बात नहीं हमने पहुंचा दी सवाल उठे एनवायरमेंट फ्रेंडली गैस सब तक कैसे पहुंचेगी <laughs> हमने वो भी पहुंचा दी कहा तो यह भी गया पैकेज फूड बिजनेस हमसे नहीं हो पाएगा लेकिन हमने कर दिखाया बातें उठी सीमेंट सेक्टर में हम कभी स्ट्रांग नहीं बन सकते तो हमने सुना नहीं बन के दिखाया चर्चा हुई देश में इतना बड़ा पोर्ट बनाना असंभव हमने संभव कर दिखाया और जब कहा गया देश के एयरपोर्ट्स इंटरनेशनल स्टैंडर्ड्स के नहीं हो सकते तब भी हमने सुना नहीं कर दिए मुश्किलों के नहीं सुनते हम करके दिखाते हैं अदाणी हम करके दिखाते हैं Welcome back. Uh, looking good for the markets right now. A hundred point uptake on the Sensex is what we're seeing. The Nifty is too picking up some sort of pace right now, and that's uh, good to see. ICICI Bank and Bajaj Twins. So Bajaj Finser, Bajaj Finance, uh, what we've been talking about. But now add to that ICICI Bank to the mix, and that explains why the Nifty is closing in on that eighteen thousand six fifty mark. The last couple of uh, uh, you know the last forty minutes or so of trade. Extremely crucial given the Fin Nifty expiry. The Nifty Financial Services actually has moved to the high point of trade alongside the Nifty Bank as well. The Nifty Bank is now above that 44,400 mark. But a bunch of stocks not doing too well. Campus Activewear is one of them. Opened lower in today's trading session and now is at the low point of trade with a cut of almost seven odd percent. And that's because of the poor results that the company reported. In fact, uh, you know the revenues for them uh, in the fourth quarter declined by about a percent and a half. But more than that, it was the EBITDA which fell by about 28 odd percent. The margins came off from closer to 22% to 16% as well. The net profit now you would see optically it's virtually unchanged, but the tax expense has come down 80% from last quarter to this quarter, as a result of which uh, the impact on the net profit is limited. But uh, you know it's been weak over the last three or four years. The company's revenues have compounded over 25, 26%, but now no growth in their revenue and margins contracting to 16%, as against the average of 20, 22% that the company has been reporting over the last few quarters does not go down well with the street. Uh, the stock has corrected a fair bit from its highs. In fact, 
post listing peak was upwards of 630 odd rupees as well so now the stock trading a little around 330 odd rupees telling you that uh, there has been a 50 percent correction as well a large part of that was on account of valuation correction and uh, the second leg now comes in on account of growth disappointment at the low point of trade for campus activewear so we'll see how this goes the large thesis of athleisure footwear doing extremely well is something that will be put to test uh, back to you guys Okay, let's talk about another stock, uh, and this one is doing well in trade, Repco Home Finance. Uh, it's up 11%, and this is after the management made some very strong bullish comments in the conference call yesterday. Abhishek joins in for more. Abhishek. Uh, well, Rima, as you mentioned, you know, there are bullish comments uh, that they made in the con call uh, yesterday. Uh, dispersal's uh, growth or sanction growth is expected to be around 20% for FI24, and they are guiding for a loan growth of about 12%. So, company expects a turnaround in growth performance in certain geographies like uh, Gujarat, uh, Maharashtra, especially in the Pune Belt and Kerala. So they may look to raise rates on an uh, you know monthly basis going ahead, uh, which will uh, you know support the net interest margin or the spreads that they carry. So they have guided for a net interest margin of about 4.8 percent to 5 percent for FI24, along with a spread of anywhere between 3 percent to 3.3 percent. Uh, cost to income ratio is expected to decline in FI24. Which means that operating efficiency will improve in FI24 when compared to FI23, and management expects a credit cost of around rupees 25 crore in FI24, and they will, uh, you know, bring down the gross NPA by about rupees 100 crore in FI24. So, stage two or loans due between 61st day to 90th day, uh, that is a 13 percent at the end of FI23. They are expecting that to decline less than 10 percent by the end of FI24. So, worst is over in terms of stress coming out of the restructured portfolio is what the management had mentioned in the con call. Back to you. Mm. And uh, the stock has also seen, uh, seen a big turn. Abhishek, thank you very much for that. Deepan is still with us. Deepan, you did uh, mention MFIs uh, where, uh, again, uh, some of the companies like Spandana, Credit Access, etc. are doing very well. Any exposure to uh, home finance companies like Repco? No, I think Repco came out of the decent set of numbers as well. And uh, it's another well-managed housing finance companies. And despite focusing on the self-employed, their NPAs have been pretty decent. Uh, I would say good management over there. And what I think is happening right now is a re-rating of the price to earnings multiple. These are great times for housing finance companies also with the real estate market really picking up and the volumes also zooming over there. So yes, I think uh, Repco Finance does have some more legs to move up. All right, uh, Deepan, uh, thank you very much uh, for that. Appreciate you joining in and uh, running us through uh, that uh, commentary. So uh, that's, uh, you know, financials in focus and uh, Deepan's views there. Vinay Jaising is joining us now. He's Managing Director, Portfolio Management Services at GM Financial. Vinay, good to have you here. Good afternoon. Thank you for your time. Uh, you know, as a <coughs> portfolio manager, Vinay, I know it's all about bottom-up stock picking, but uh, do you have a broader... Uh, sort of market view uh, at all that, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, things are perhaps uh, at the margin getting a little stretched or do you think it's all uh, well and fine and the earnings catch-up is uh, pretty good enough uh, to uh, justify uh, these levels and beyond? Thank you for the question. Uh, I think uh, clearly it's time coming for India to shine. Uh, we have a view that the market should breach the 16 and a half to the 18 and a half thousand band, which it has been in the last two years. If you look at what's happened this year itself, Nasdaq is up about 24, 25 percent. Japan is up about 20 percent and India is flat. So there's been a lot of underperformance India has gone through in this year. Uh, a lot of the outperformance of last year has been, uh, I would say, removed off. Secondly, what's also interestingly happened is FIIs who were net sellers last year of 18 to 20 billion dollars and the last, I would say, a month, month and a half have uh, put in five and a half to six billion dollars, a great positive. Uh, we have Retail India through SIPs also putting in a lot of money, so that's another big positive. Uh, earnings results, when we got into the results, we thought it's only going to be the banks which would do well. Very interestingly, if I remove the banks and I look at QOQ number, uh, the QOQ numbers for non-banks, are up about 30 to 33% in terms of profitability. So earnings momentum has also been ticked. Uh, finally, the currency, uh, we were a little concerned about the currency last year after seeing 70 uh, levels of the rupee moving to 82 levels. The DXY has corrected from 150 into 
100 and 304 levels currently, uh, but the rupee is still at 82. Uh, looking at where crude is at about 75 levels, looking at where coal is at about $150 levels, uh, we think the bill for Forex for the country is going to go down. Uh, we will save about 40 to $50 billion purely for these two commodities. And it's time for even the Indian currency to appreciate compared to uh, the U.S. currency. So all these seem to be telling us, you know, it's a time for India to move out of this band and do uh, a lot more better. Uh, valuations, uh, yes, you know, when we spoke last time, you know, we were closer to the 17,000 levels. Uh, valuations have inched up from 17, 18 times one year forward to 20 times. But what's interesting is when you're seeing cuts happen in the rest of the world for earnings, in India, you're going to see earnings move up. And when we go forward one year, uh, when we were sitting here, you know, one year forward, which is in, let's say, May 24, uh, and we are factoring in uh, fiscal 25 numbers, we're probably at 16, 17 times with an index level of about 1,100 for EPS. So you can see, you know, 15% plus upside in our eyes in the next 12 months and a bottom side of, of about 6 to 7%. Right. Uh, you know, when I, I was looking at your underweight and that uh, really interested me because you're underweight on IT, pharma and new age. Now, IT, I understand we've been getting a lot of opinion from a lot of the market experts here as well, saying that maybe growth uh, headwinds in the global scenario may keep the IT stocks uh, under pressure for a bit before they you know get constructive on it. But increasingly, people are getting positive on pharmaceutical as well as new age. New age largely because everyone's focusing on operational performance at the cost of growth and the valuations are reflecting that as well. Delivery, Nika, as well as Zomato, all of them trading anywhere between three, four, five times two year forward sales. And pharma as well, a lot of individual stocks uh, looking a lot better after the correction that we've seen. Uh, what's your call for underweight on all pharma and new age in specific? And what would change your thesis here? Sure. So as far as pharma is concerned, we prefer playing pharma using the specialty chemical segment. Uh, here, and you know, if you're looking at the raw material for pharma, uh, you're looking at fine chemicals, you're looking at API ingredients, you know, we like companies like Ami, uh, we like companies like Tatwa Chintan, which is tomorrow's play on uh, uh, the EV story, or companies like Arkin, you know, which is, uh, you know, the bromine chain play. Uh, or Gujarat Fluoro, which is the Korean chain play. So, you know, we like companies in the specialty chemical as compared to pharma. Uh, again, uh, part of this emanates from our, 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 uh, our state on what the dollar rupee would be. You know, if we think that the rupee is going to be at about 80, we might as well avoid the global names as compared to the uh, domestic names. So, you know, that's part of the reason. Moving to your second question for new age. As far as new age is concerned, you know, we are very focused on the fact that interest rates are high. They are going to correct, but interest rates are high. And today, interest costs for highly levered companies, companies which are not making profits, are going to be a little more difficult. So if operations do better, uh, there are much easier ways to play new age. You know, two ways to play new age, which we think are uh, SBI cards and Devyani, a QSR chain and a credit card company, both of them using technology to the hilt and profitable. What would change our thesis? Uh, we want to see one, two quarters of a possibility of higher EBITDA to see where visibility of profits would come up for the new age companies. Hmm. Uh, Vinay, in the QSR space, why is it that you like Devyani? Because there are a plethora of op options now. You're going with uh, KFC, Pizza Hut, and the Costa Coffee owner, um, Devyani International, but why not the others, like a Jubilin Food Works, a Westlife, uh, which owns McDonald's, or even a restaurant's brand, Asia, uh, which owns Burger King. So why have you selected Devyani? So between the three, there's, there's little to choose on. Uh, Devyani, we've seen the management execute and grow very steadily in terms of uh, number of outlets they're opening, both in KFC as well as in Costa Coffee. Uh, so we like Devyani because of that. But, you know, put the other way around, Sapphire, uh, very similar story, uh, same brands, uh, uh, much cheaper valuation. We like that as well. Just between the two, we think the management of Devyani is a lot more aggressive. That's why we are betting on it. As a chain, the QSR chain, we think will do a lot more better than the other consumption names. All right. Uh, when I just hold on to that thought, we have Apollo Hospitals numbers, which are flashing for our viewers on the screen. And on the top line, it's bang in line with what Ekta's poll threw up. Uh, so that's no problem out there. However, the net profit has come in much lower. So I think we'll have to see whether or not there's an operational miss or whether or not there is something below the operational performance. Because for the time being, 
The stock has taken a sharp downtick. It was trading well in the green. It's come lower. But we'll need further clarity on that front. And I think our ticker team will be putting up that number. There it is. There is a bit of a miss, actually, on the EBITDA front. That's uh, a miss of close to around 7%, I think so, in comparison to what we were working with. 517 crores is what we were working with. It's come in at around uh, 488 crores. Also. So there's an operational miss out there, which explains why that stock has come in lower. And on the margin aspect, it's missed our estimates by close to around 60 basis points. More analysis on that coming up in just a bit, but safe to say that the number is a little weaker than expected. Then I, we had to take stock of, uh, you know, that uh, company that just came out with a set of numbers. But I was reading your note and you're quite impressed with the recent earnings, uh, uh, you know, that we have got as well, the quarterly earnings. So good on that. And you're, uh, you know, expecting India to improve from year on. I wanted to ask you about the defense space. I think you all got in early in some of these companies, uh, you know, Bharat Dynamics, BDL. But suddenly you have this lumpiness of the business that comes in there. And for BDL in particular, the last quarter's numbers are very un uninspiring. You continue to remain a positive stance out here. Will you want to, uh, you know, continue to add on at these levels? Absolutely. So as you rightly said it, uh, BDL's uh, last quarter numbers, even when they gave their provisional numbers, were a bit lesser than expected. So, you know, when they gave the provisional numbers, it came largely in line with what expected came when the results came out. But if you look at BDL's future growth, you know, they have a five to six times forward order book. Uh, they are 7 to 8% in terms of export, which is going to increase to 20 to 25% in the next four to five years. Their margins are 23 to 24%. And the PAT growth, because last year was a little tepid, is an impressive 25%. And the stock's trading one year forward at about 18 times. Uh, it's all about missiles. You know, Akash is doing pretty well. So we really like that stock and we are buyers of it. Mm. Uh, Vinay, I know broadly you're underweight on, I think, technology. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. So across the board, we've seen technology names uh, derate, uh, given the global headwinds, the slowdown in growth rates, etc. But amongst them, is there, are there one or two mid-cap stocks, perhaps, that you think are attractive? Because there has been a big, broad brush of downgrades. But there would be a few companies which are now starting to offer attractive uh, are at attractive levels. Is there anything which has caught your attention in mid-cap IT or in IT? Absolutely. So we are underweight IT because of, you know, two reasons. One is the two-year, 10-year interest rate cycle in U.S. still seems to challenge us. You know, that negative number was 0.5 a month ago. Today, minus uh, 75 basis points. Uh, uh, the debt ceiling in U.S. will be raised. Uh, and, you know, there won't be questions about it for two years. So it should... Uh, soften up a bit, but you know the fact of the matter is there is pain in uh, as far as U.S. economy is concerned. Also, our uh, call on why the rupee is going to head is making us being underweight the IT space. Having said that, you know there are companies like Persistent in mid cap, uh, which have I think uh, a good earnings growth. They have a good revenue growth trajectory. Uh, they are not in the normal cliche IT space. Uh, uh, here is, you know, a product company which is also having some kind of services which are required, uh, which cannot be pushed on the future years. So that's why we like a company like Persistent. It may be costlier than uh, the large caps, but uh, we very strongly believe uh, that the company's earning growth, uh, in, even in the market like this, is going to be a healthy 20%. Vinay, very briefly, I just wanted to uh, hear your thoughts on you own Supreme Industries. It's uh, come back to all-time highs once again. Uh, what's the thesis there, briefly? So, one, capacity utilization of 65% uh, waiting to exhale, uh, FCF positive. Uh, the company is at about 30 times one year forward earnings, 25% uh, ROE. It's part of the building material cash capex cycle. So, if you wanted to play real estate without buying the real estate companies, you either buy the uh, financial NBFCs or better still buy companies which will directly get advantage when the buildings are either getting modernized or you're building pipes. So for us, Supreme is exactly one such uh, company. It's never had a bad return on capital employed, uh, uh, very healthy hygiene parameters and the entire balance sheet of the company. Uh, the utilization rate of capacity is very important because that means that though the ROC is already north of 20%, it's going to inch up a lot more uh, just because uh, you don't need to spend more CapEx in this business.
All right, Vinay, thank you so much for joining in and uh, giving us your views on the markets, individual stocks, as well as talking about your sector preferences as well. But meanwhile, we were having the conversation at the bottom of your screen. There were Apollo Hospitals numbers as well. Looks like largely in line as compared to the CND CTV 18 poll. Mild miss. We have Ekta joining in with more details. Ekta, what do you make of these numbers? Well, yes, the, you know, the revenue is bang in line with our estimates. Uh, 4,300 odd crores is what they've reported. What, where the miss has really come in is basically the margins because that has missed estimates. The street was anticipating maybe 12% in terms of margins. They've come in at around 11.3, 11.4%. And the profit has come in lower than estimates. It's come in at around 145 odd crores. The street was anticipating around 190 odd crores. So, yes, there is a base impact on a year on year basis, which looks as though there's a strong profit uh, gain but actually this profit figure which has come through is the lowest that we've seen in the entire four quarters of FI23. Now the reason for that is possibly because of the digital business which is uh, the most important a leg in terms of investments for the company that is probably uh, that is recorded a loss this quarter as well it is in investment mode the company has said that they would probably break even by uh, fi24 so that is a guidance which the street will probably quiz them on but overall it's the profit which is missed queries with regards to the digital business will be top of mind and the margins are probably under pressure because of investments going undergoing uh, you know going towards the entire apollo 24 7 hour Okay, thank you very much uh, for that. Get into a break. On the other side, we'll get you a few technical trading calls, BTSD calls coming in from our expert. slow. I'm a tortoise. But your wealth managers, they shouldn't be as slow, you know? Choose Nuvama. We move at the right pace because we only do what's right for you and your money. Nuvama. Let's do it right. Let it all go. With J.K. Tyres Ranger 80 for the ones who are wild at heart. J.K. Tyre Total Control. On the day that counts the most, CNN News 18 was the number one news channel during counting hours and commanded the highest viewer attention throughout the day. Trouncing the competition, CNN News 18, India's number one English news channel. When our big boss was MD, he used to take care of us. And our Prince Sahab is busy ensuring his family. <laughs> oh, big boss, you? He's uh, busy obtaining term insurance for his family. After all, office is also our family, am I right? Hmm? Let's close sure. the deal. <laughs> Thank you. Varma ji, huh? will you have tea with this prince? 
<laughs> LIC's Group Term Assurance Plan takes care of your office family. Welcome back to Closing Bell. Well, it's around 3 p.m. order and you're getting a 3 p.m. move on the contract that's going to expire in the next few minutes. The Nifty Financial Services Index, the Nifty has moved higher, but I think the Nifty Financial Services Index, that's the one that you should focus on. And the HDFC Twins, we highlighted this at the start of the show. It's moving towards a resistance mark. I'll tell you what now, if we can hold on to this 19,620-odd mark, just hold above it we could see a quick flip on the Nifty itself in the upward direction because the positioning was such that we'll hold on to that level. Now, suddenly, we're moving higher. So the HDFC twins, the Bajaj twins as well, which are part of the Nifty Financial Services Index, it's a typical expiry that's playing out. And I think the last couple of expiries were quite for the Nifty Financial Services Index. This time, it's saying, let's participate and explains why we're virtually at the high point of the day. Mitesh Chakar is back with us. Uh, Mitesh, a uh, quick word on the index and your calls as well. So on the index, I think, you know, Nigel, I've been maintaining a positive stance. And uh, since we did not go below the uh, reversal levels of the short-term up move, I think maintain your longs. Uh, 44,150 is the level on the bank nifty. 18,510 is the level on the nifty. So maintain longs over there. So on the stock side, uh, Aurobindo Pharma is uh, nearly near the day's high. That's BTST with the stop at 644, targets of 665 here. And AB Capital is something also on the radar. I think after about 9, 10 days of consolidation, it's given a good breakout on the upside. So BTSD here with the stop at about 168.5 for targets of 175. Okay, those were a few, uh, you know, trading calls. Keep your eye out on HDFC Life. I, it's not a part of the Nifty Bank, so it's not pushing the Nifty Bank higher, but you can see a big up move coming through in HDFC Life, uh, especially in the last one hour of trade. So that will come up for your new screen. Uh, a couple of the other, you know, NBFC stroke insurance companies which are doing well, Bajaj FinServe is also higher in trade, and Bajaj Finance has a gain of close to about 1.1%. These are some of the other notable uh, movers. But of course, the bulk, the heavy lifting has been done by HDFC Limited as well as HDFC uh, Life. But the MSCI index rebalancing changes will be effective tomorrow. Uh, everything that you need to know about it, uh, Vivek is joining in to fill us in. Vivek. Well, that's right. So, you know, on May 11th, uh, the MSCI had actually gone ahead and intimated uh, about the list of uh, inclusions as well as exclusions and some of the notable names that we need to keep track of in terms of weight changes. So, you know, the reason we are highlighting it today is that uh, tomorrow uh, in the trading session, you will actually see uh, the inflows as well as the outflows in all of the names that we are highlighting. So it will be important to track, you know, the kind of uh, uh, move that these particular stocks need. Remember, uh, most of these names are already known, so active funds have actually gone ahead and already deployed and taken positions in most of the names that we are highlighting. Uh, now, it's a net e inflow event as far as India is concerned, this particular MSCI event. Uh, inflows in excess of $500 million is what is anticipated in tomorrow's trading session. So which are the inclusions in the MSCI Standard Index, the main index? Max Healthcare expecting inflows of over $290 million. Sona BLW expecting inflows of over $175 million. HAL Hindustan Aeronautics, we are seeing inflows of over $195 million. On the other hand, three exclusions this time around. Industar, Adani Transmission, as well as Adani Total Gas will be excluded from the index. Uh, now the most important stock in tomorrow's trading session would be Kotak Mahindra Bank. Uh, on the back of the weightage increase that is expected, expect inflows of over $800 million into the stock tomorrow. Some notable names would include Indigo as well as Zomato, where there will be weight in increases leading to further inflows. Uh, in the MSCI small cap names, you know, quite a lot of uh, changes and as well as inclusions as well as exclusions. But we are highlighting the ones, you know, where there will be maximum impact in terms of the average trading, trading volume. So KFIN Tech, Keynes Tech, uh, Bikaji Foods, Fusion, Microfinance are the inclusions. On the other hand, deletions include Polycap, Gillette, Aztec Life Sciences, as well as Philip Bilcon. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot for that, Vivek. By the way, the, you know, the Nifty Financial Services Index, uh, that expiry is playing out, and it's doing a relative outperformance in comparison to the Nifty Bank. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> because HTFC Limited, the Bajaj Twins, you know, put that together, that's around 23% of the Nifty Financial Services Index, and that's moved higher. So that's why there's a marginal outperformance, because 23% of uh, the Nifty Financial Services Index is actually not part of the Nifty Bank. That's HDFC Limited, the Bajaj Twins, you have HDFC Life as well as SBI Life, and all these stocks you put it together, they have all moved to the high point of the day. So a bit of fun and games playing out out there, but we haven't managed to cross above that 19,625 baht mark. Good time to get in though. Uh, 
call on the index. Uh, Jay Bala of CashTheChaos.com joins us on the show. Hi, Jay. Good to speak to you. Jay, what's your stance now? The Nifty seems to be headed towards fresh all-time highs. You've been fairly cautious. What are the data points you're looking at? Where does Nifty have to close above to head to around the 19, 20,000 odd mark? Uh, hi, Nigel. Uh, there's a slight difference, I mean, slight change of, uh, you know, a pattern for the Nifty. So, again, hence a change of opinion. And, uh, you know, um, I had mentioned two weeks ago that the Nifty, if it closes below 18.315 and also takes out 18.055 on intraday basis, we'll have a trend reversal. But the markets came uh, five points short of that and uh, turned, uh, turned around from the 18 zeros from 18.060. Uh, right now, um, you know, the, uh, as long as the Nifty can stay above 18.419, I think it's trying to clock higher highs. Uh, assume that it's going to uh, uh, you know, test the higher highs. But if the Nifty were to pull back to 18.459, uh, 18.458.9, to be more precise, 18.458.9 before uh, 18.887, I think the, the Nifty will get back into trouble. And uh, you know, uh, I, I, until that point, assume that you know um, there is a change of uh, guard and probably you know the all-time highs. Getting put at uh, risk. Hmm. Okay, so basically, don't turn back. Don't look back. Right, just keep heading higher, uh, uh, and and perhaps the uptrend then uh, remains uh, uh, intact. Now, on the banks uh, index, Jay, you have you sent across two uh, graphs, and we have them ready. One is uh, both are weekly charts on the Nifty Bank Nifty. Uh, one is uh, beginning October 2019. The other is uh, starting. Uh, that's the one, October 2019, and the other one is uh, from, I think, uh, Jan, Jan uh, 21. Uh, so, we've got two of them. Go on. Why don't you explain, uh, you yeah. know, we have the graphics as you send them. Go on. Yeah, yeah discuss this, uh, about this uh, without graphics uh, a couple of weeks back, Prashan. And uh, the, the main reason I'm not able to get bullish on the uh, market on out outright expansion, uh, expansionary price action is because of this. If you look at the bank Nifty from the pandemic low, all the price movements have been overlapping and uh, you know back and forth into the previous price range. Uh, I know even if, if you look at the move from October, uh, sorry, the March 2020 low and uh, uh, you know right, right up to the uh, you know 2021 high of 33708, th that can be you know tweaked and uh, seen as a price expansion we move. But the move from uh, January 2021 is no way uh, price expansionary, and you know. It's coming to uh, uh, what we call as a rising wedge pattern. And uh, even if the price were to slightly overshoot these levels, uh, you know, uh, under, under technical analysis, this needs to retrace uh, the entire move from the starting point of, uh, you know, April 2021. And uh, now, even if it's a bullish case, it needs to retrace at least more than 61.88% of the move. So, you know, this is putting a lot of pressure on the bullish case. So this is the reason why I'm not able to consider an outright bullish view on the uh, overall Nifty because the banking index constitutes about one third of the overall weight in the Nifty. All right, uh, one third of the weight coming in from the Nifty Bank, which uh, does not give you a lot of confidence. But Jay, the Nifty FMCG index, that hit a fresh record high uh, last Friday. And a large part of that gain was courtesy ITC, which has been a big standout performer. ITC around that 450 mark, what's your view on the Nifty FMCG index, and do you think it, there's case for, you know, the weight to shift away from ITC and the others as well, uh, now move to the others? That's right, Mangalam. You know, I've been bullish on uh, the uh, FMCG index uh, since, uh, you know, for uh, the last year, and uh, I've been maintaining ITC hasn't topped out and it's got higher highs to come through, but now things are changing a bit. Uh, ITC is coming to a big resistance about 458, and uh, while that, that could be a change of guard and passing of baton from ITC to uh, other FNCG names. Uh, I think ITC is, uh, you know, likely to reverse from here. But still, you know, as I've been pointing out, <clears throat> the updated trailing level is about, about 409. Now it's about 412. As long as ITC uh, stays above 412, uh, it can still uh, can be considered in an uptrend, but it's coming close to an end point. Mm. So, uh, if ITC reverses after getting to levels of 458, slips a bit, would you recommend buying? No, uh, I would think, uh, oh. I know, uh, this is the uh, profit booking level even for investors who've been long on ITC from uh, October 2020. Um, got it. Now, we got bullish on uh, ITC around those levels. 
but you know 50 to 200 is the you know objective for the fmcg index but i think that will be taken up by britannia nestle and hsl to, to a large extent and itc may uh, pay, uh, play second fill, second fill so even long term investors should book profits now in itc yeah and if you are conservative wait for a break below, uh, you know Four, four, uh, four on two. Until that, you know, you can keep trailing and keep holding. Mm. Okay, all right. Jay, it seems to change your stance a little bit to be a little bit more positive on the index. But on IT, you still believe there's more pain? I believe you're going short on Infosys? Yeah, that's right. It's a, it's a conditional short on Infosys, uh, Nigel. Uh, you know, uh, the extreme short term, I'm not con sure if it's completed a short term move. But, you know, if it uh, Infosys trades below 1289, uh, you know, one year below 1289, it's trend turning down and probably going to fresh 50-week uh, low. Uh, until that, one needs to wait. The stop needs to be about 1350 uh, for this price move uh, towards uh, 1170. And uh, there is, uh, you like ICICI Pro on the long side, right, Jay? Yeah, that's right. You know, uh, it's doing a, a short-term bullish move. Um, you know, uh, the last couple of days has seen interesting price action. So, you know, I think a price objective close to 540 is likely, uh, but, you know, uh, a stop below 430 is essential. Uh, Jai, do stay on. We need to slip into a very short break. But as we do that, here is a quick programming note. Future Female Forward is headed to Hyderabad tomorrow. Catch industry leaders share some valuable insights on creating an equitable workplace only on CNBC TV 18. Trading shouldn't feel like this. That's why we have made ICICI Direct Flash Trade, which gives you a clutter-free experience, quick entry or exit, live tracking with only 7 rupees per order. Investments in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing. Helps beat sensitivity fast. Sensodyne Rapid Relief. Now, how many times do you have to put it, sir? Why do you not understand this thing, sir? Why do you not understand this? आप हमारा ध्यान रखो हम आपका ध्यान रखेंगे एंटी करप्शन एक्शन लाइन मैडम जी मैडम जी आप बेकार में परेशान हो रहे हो मैं कराता हूँ ना दो दिन में आपका काम आप तो बस चढ़ावा चढ़ा देना घर बैठे आ जाएगा आपका लाइसेंस आपको ड्राइविंग टेस्ट की भी जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी पक्का पक्का जी पक्का तो आपने एक नंबर लिखी है जब बन जाएगा तो उस पर कॉल करिएगा अगर आपसे भी कोई रिश्वत मांगे तो कॉल करें नाइन फाइव जीरो वन टू डबल जीरो टू डबल जीरो एंटी करप्शन एक्शन लाइन से पिछले एक साल में अब तक तीन सौ ऐसी ज्यादा भ्रष्टाचारी गिरफ्तार हो चुके हैं पंजाब में रिश्वत लेने वालों की अब खैर नहीं पंजाब के लोगों को ये संदेश देना चाहता हूँ पंजाब को भ्रष्टाचार मुक्त बनाना हमारा वादा ही नहीं गारंटी है We don't just make new categories. We remake legends. In fact, we make the whole world of India's mobility new forever. New car khareedne se pehle aapko check kare aur 36000 tak bachaye. Welcome back. Inching towards 18,650. It's a quarter of a percent gain on the Nifty. We've got a few minutes to go before markets close for trade today. In conversation with Jay Bala. Jay, another space that you're very bullish on now is capital goods. Can you take us through your individual calls on names like ABB, Siemens? And what about LNT? Because LNT still hasn't recovered from the post earnings blow. 
Yeah, that's right. Uh, if you recall, Rima, <clears throat> a few weeks back, I had said, you know, uh, the SMCG index is set for a volatile move at high, higher highs at you. And that volatility came through a, a last and topping out from the medium term. But, you know, uh, we should we could still have, uh, you know, the index go up further, uh, but it could be led by uh, ADB, Carborundum, uh, and CG Power. Uh, whereas uh, LNT and Siemens, which have been, you know, uh, taking a, a, a short-term beating, they could uh, lag behind and drag the market slower. Okay. Uh, well, Jay, we'll leave it there for now. Thank you very much uh, for your time. Appreciate you joining in uh, with your views and uh, the uh, sort of call on the index as well. So Jay is basically saying that banks to him are not exactly showing a big breakout move, and that's the reason why, I mean, he's not particularly all that... Uh, you know, outrightly bullish on the index as well. But, of course, he put out levels be, uh, beyond which, you know, uh, markets should uh, do well. And actually, levels which the market, if it holds, uh, will help it uh, scale high levels. 44 points on the Nifty, 18,643, which is, what, three minutes, less than three minutes away from market closing. Uh, so let's actually start wrapping up things. Uh, on the large caps, I mean, if I can start with the indices, private banks did well. Uh, the Nifty Private Bank Index ends three quarters of a percent higher. The FMCG Index about 0 0.6. Uh, and uh, you have the uh, Bank Nifty, which was up about uh, 0 0.4 odd percent uh, as well. I mean, uh, large cap Nifty names uh, in terms of specific stocks. <coughs> what do we have? Uh, the gainers are HDFC Life, Bajaj FinServe, Kotak Bank, Bajaj Finance. Uh, these are the 1% movers. I think large actually. On the downside, Hindalco, Adani Enterprises, Tata Steel, uh, Tech Mahindra are some of the 1, 1.5% losers. So neither here nor there, but the fact is we end higher once again. Broader markets though, I think, uh, offer up uh, such uh, sort of rich and varied moves, both up and down, very large moves across single stocks. Rima. I think markets higher now for the fourth consecutive day uh, today. Uh, but in terms of the mid-cap action, let me start with some of the gainers. And again, it's just not going to be a comprehensive list. But Force Motors up 20%, Venus Remedies up 20%, Repco Home Finance up 10%, Monte Carlo, Hikal, Rico Auto. Uh, these are some companies reporting solid numbers and the stocks did well. <coughs> Stuffcraft, the Stovecraft is down 12%. RVNL sold off quite uh, sharply. Um, and you had cuts in names like Tarsons as well, but just about a 1% odd. Um, so, big, big move seen in individual names reacting well, to numbers. Well, that's right, Rima. I think in the last few minutes, we got Mazka and Doc's uh, numbers as well. And that stock is up close to around 4.5%. So, just keep an eye out uh, on that one. To run you through a few more gainers today, you had RBL. That's corrected a fair bit from the top. Well, that one was up close to around 6%. Jindal Saw as well was up close to around 10%. Markson's Pharma came out with its set of numbers. They looked quite good. The stock was up close to around 7.5%. And PFC, what a beautiful move that stock has had. You know, we had highlighted a couple of aspects at around 130, 140 odd. It seems those, uh, you know, those reforms in the power space are, are playing out. And you have PFC and REC as well, which is an indirect way of playing the power theme. Both of them are making fresh 52-week highs. So both of them did pretty well. All in all, a good session and the Nifty Financial Index. The last stick is at the high point of the day. Expiry played out today, so let's get the Nifty Financial Index up for you on the screen, up half a percent and outperform it today. Any 150 points up on the Nifty Bank. It's a wrap and closing bell from the entire team. Thank you for watching. On the other side, we bring you our Tuesday special, Commodity Champions. Powered by LIC.